I will just talk about the technology and of Sindur. So firstly, let me assure you, it was a whole of nation approach and the collaboration was there. Was it in conjunction with other nations or not? That's a moot point, but uh, it should be. It should be in long run. As far as deep data mining, that became a criticality that if you had the deep data with you, it would have helped you more. So for the last one and a half, two years, since our deputy chief is the one who's looking at data, big data analysis, integration and everything, we have started it in a big way. And if you have the data, then only you can go for the predictive analysis and all that. So this is something which is a big lesson we realize. And data is something now we are working out. And we are also looking at what headings. So that later on it doesn't happen that the data becomes so haphazard that we don't know how to handle it. Initially, when we were trying to digitize, we were just taking all the notes, files, and uh, kind of a just scanning. That was not digitization. Digitization is reading it, scanning it, and be able to get this kind of a job, which requires a major, if I can say that, processing capability. And this processing capability was not available with us. But again, courtesy the initiative of the deputy chief, we walked up to Maiti, and they gave us, and uh, that is the kind of a GPUs. So this is something which immediately helped Indian Army to go in for, if I can say that, data handling of a, a big quantum. So first one which I will talk about the uh, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, because uh, we realize that the common operating operational int picture is something which is important or integrated picture which is important. We have for the Army, we have for the Navy, we have for the Air Force. But getting it together so that all the, if I can say, the layers can sit on one and then we can take the decision. That is something which we have not been doing. By the way, this is the first time that the India has one operational name, common name is Op Sindhu. Earlier we used to have, for example, if it's Kargil, so you'll have Op Vijay for Army, Safed Sagar for Air Force and so on and so forth. So even if we were kind of uh, having some problems, inside the room there was no cameras. We could sort it out and come back as a fresh man when we come outside. But what is important is the differences must be discussed and it must be overcome. And that's what we could achieve. So as far as the ISR is concerned, we realize that whatever authorization you give, I have told you that I'm looking at Eagle on the arm to begin with. So whatever the small drone which has been shown to me today, I had uh, discussed this dream last year when I had come here. And of course, thereafter, I realized that in the headquarters, things are moving very slow. So I created those organizations which are now kind of, uh, they, to fill their quench for thirst, they have to buy all these things. So we have created uh, 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 the Rudra, Divyastra, Shaktiban, and of course, Bhaira, what all this, this is already in the internet, you can look into it. So Tether Drone, something which came as a kind of a big surprise to us. Because the jamming was so high in this Op Sindur that they could not cross, some they could cross, we could not cross, we could cross some. So the jamming was something which became a kind of a thing for the surveillance. So Tether Drones is something which provides us that kind of a thing because even if he wants to target, how many will he target? So the number is more then it becomes easier and there is no, if I can say that, the gap which is there. And that's why Tether Drone became the talk of the town. And uh, as far as the satellites are concerned, yes, satellites, we realize that we need much more. But pseudo-satellite came up in a big way. Pseudo-satellites are the one which basically, they perhaps what we say, they come to a particular level and remain for the desired period what you want. And they cover the area what you desire to be covered. So that is something which uh, we are also working out. The other side is also buying it. And this is some field. But what is important is not only the flying object. It is the electro-optical equipment which is there and the communication from that to the ground. This is something which co uh, comes into play. And this is also need to be seen. And of course, uh, as far as the endurance of that uh, satellite is concerned, important. So this time also what happened, some good Samaritans, no names, nothing, came up because India exists all over the world and uh, our diaspora is all over the world. And of course, if I can say that, picking up data from the social media and mobiles. There is another thing called as uh, light situation. That, okay, where was the light on today? Where was the concentration of light was more, here or there? Now to get this kind of information, kind of a process it, and come out with the inference that, okay, this is what artificial intelligence, that this is what it could be. This is what something is required. And you will find all these fields, you will play a very, very important role. Of course, uh, we have a lot many agencies, NTRO, ISRO, INT agencies, etc. And we realize that our platform, which are common, need to be much more empowered. So we are working towards that. And of course, uh, 
we also need to strike a balance between the federated and centralized info flow. Because if you have centralized info flow in the cloud, then what happens? You will find that if that gets impacted, the only one, the reserve alternate which you have, that's all. But if you have a federated, then you'll find the local, at least, region will not get impacted. Because that will have its own as well as having with the central server. So this is the kind of a thing which you are looking at. And that is where you'll find that all the three services have something called a centralization and decentralization. And a mix of that is something which is the orchestration of operations. The second one is narrative management system. So narrative management system is something which we realize in a big way because uh, victory is in mind. It's always in mind. If you ask to a Pakistani whether you lost or won, you say, my chief has become field marshal. We must have won only. That's why he's become field marshal. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying that this is how you can influence the population. So it is the domestic population, it is the adversaries population, and it is the neutral population. Can rising powers be accommodated? That's a question you have to ask. And you will get the answer yourself. So then we made inroads through our own way. And the narrative management system, by getting the social uh, uh, kind of a sensitive index, then uh, getting to use the Twitters and other handles from other places. So the strategic messaging which was there was very, very important. And that's why the first messaging we did that, OK, justice done, of Sindur, that hit the maximum, I am told, in the world today, the number of hits which received. So that was the strategic messaging by a simple message. And the logo which you see all over the world was created by a lieutenant colonel and a NCO. So we prepared all this. So when we were going in for this kind of uh, op Sindur operation, we were also going for these things because narrative management system is important. So what it means that when it comes to the technology, there is a technology here, there is a technology here. The big party would like to propagate a technology to be much, much better, and you will get influenced by it. And the social, the smaller one will not have the money power to kind of propagate that. So that is where I think the narrative management system plays a role. And if we are able to kind of uh, get in time, uh, I assure you that we will be able to help out the, this kind of a smaller party also. As we dug through the OSINT, we could also declare the fake. And that's why uh, with the IIT Guwahati also, we have signed the, uh, and for IIT Delhi also, we have signed the MOUs on uh, interacting or getting information from the OSINT. And this fake our stamping was something which was giving a great credibility. Now, when we talk about the predictive analysis, I told you about the big leaders. But I think uh, with this kind of a thing, we do not have time now because even the core commanders will change, even the naval commanders will change on the other side. So we need to put in all this data and we should be able to see, okay, what is the thought process? What is he likely to do? No, predictive analysis is required. And that is where we all play a role in it. And so the communication is concerned, of course, uh, secure battlefield networks, it helped us in a big way. Cyber defense measures. This is something, whatever you do, you will find you are still short of uh, effort. And uh, you know that what kind of attacks which were carried out, and we could ward off, we could uh, recoup back wherever it's required, you could rebound back. But next time, it may be much more. And uh, whether that country will do it alone, it will be supported by some other country, we do not know. But I have a strong hunch feeling that that country will not be alone. And that is where we have to be careful. Here I would like to talk about Sambhav. Because Sambhav is a courtesy IIT Madras. And uh, this was a big game changer. Why? Other otherwise, we used to be on the WhatsApp. If we have to talk anything, secret, we cannot talk. So we are talking on the mobiles. But this Sambhav gave us a big uplift. Same thing, this war, starting from 22nd April, we formed various groups, as you are aware. But here, there was a kind of a drawing board where everybody was knowing what is happening. So my Southern Army commander sitting at Pune, who is controlling the Rajasthan, doesn't have to tell JNK what is he doing. It is known through that. But what we learned, that we allowed too many people to use somehow. And we gave too many permissions. So now, at the time of crisis, if there are 100 messages, how will you kind of uh, sift that which is the operationally important? That's why the hierarchy became important. But the workload is something which was, let's say, X. It became 100X. When it became 100X, Murphy's Law, the server also went down at that point of time. We had to change the server. So then we realized that the hierarchy of communication becomes very important. So centralization is important, but decentralization was also important. And that is where once we make sure that the hierarchy was uh, kind of reverted back, it became easy. But still, 
the load on Sambhav was very high and happy note that Sambhav 2.0 is also being looked at because that will kind of uh, help us for Sindhu 2.0. So I'm sure before Sindhu 2.0 starts, Sambhav 2.0 will be actually commercialized. Coming on to electronic warfare, of course, uh, you're masters of it, so I don't have to talk about it. AM spectrum dominance, jamming, I told you, it was in a big way. But deception, we could uh, do a lot with the electronic warfare. And uh, beyond that, I would not like to speak, but uh, as the, you know, that headquarters, et cetera, depicted from that. And of course, radar fingerprinting. Again, deep data. Because all the radars open at various places. And if you have the data, then you know, okay, which radar is opening up and it is held with which formation. That tells you the orbiting, which is important. So fingerprinting, which becomes important. And, uh, and therefore, the long-term involvement here becomes important. And ECAS or something, I think it's already in the media also, that we have created a software which is helping us. Of course, that is something which we have just started, but I am sure with the AI kind of a caliber which is there with the IIT Madras, that will become very, very strong, and it will get interlinked with the tri services because we need to work out together. As far as target engagement is concerned, we rely that uh, attrition warfare is no more going to give you the results. So you need smart munition. All the dumb bombs have to be con uh, converted to smart bombs. We are working out with others also in this field because uh, here we do not have much time. And Russia also, finally, you realize only two things are working. Rest of everything has gone back. Uh, today I was reading the, air, uh, reading the air assets have been pushed back. And uh, the platform which are there, they only use when required. But the artillery guns and the drones, they are the only two things. The only thing what they have done, their dumb bombs have been converted to smart bombs. So the precision has increased. When the precision has increased, how does it help Indian economy? If you use a X number for, let's say, dumb bomb, you will use only one-fifth of the ammunition if it's precision in nature. And that is where you'll find that the cost does not make a difference. The impact which will help us, because it will be timely impact and allow us to further the battle which is required. Rockets, extended range, we are well aware that what we are working here. And we also carried out a trial yesterday where we got the circular probability of uh, uh, two meters for the 70 kilometer pinaka. And of course, ramjet technology, again, we are having a very, very high hopes. And we are, uh, I'll not say running out of patience, but we are impatient that earlier it comes, better it is. And uh, of course, uh, if I can say that uh, private industry also uh, tested some missiles, which was again in the newspaper, 150 to 400 kilometers. So we're moving fast, and we have to move, move much faster. So I'm drones, and uh, mother, and the, if I can say that the uh, uh, sub drones or children drones which are there there's a new concept and uh, today there is in the newspaper uh, in the twitter also and in india also one company has offered 30 kilometer of a spool and in ukraine they have used 40 kilometer of a spool so there is no interference or jamming which can take place unless you physically destroy it so this is the kind of a thing which is being looked at. So what happens? You send a spool for 30 kilometers. By the time the two uh, layers of jammers have been uh, kind of a pass through, thereafter the mothership goes another 20, 30 kilometers, opens up with the kind of a sub drones, and then you can create the havoc which is required. So 50 to 60 kilometer depth we can achieve. That is the kind of a range what we are looking at with this. And of course, armed UAVs, I don't have to talk about it. And employment of baits from both sides. So this time what they did, they sent the small drones first so that you use your anti-aircraft guns, you, you open your radars. So your anti-aircraft gun locations are known, your radar locations are known, then same frequency is known so they know which kind of a radar and everything. And then they came with the kind of a armed small UAVs or drones, Yiha class, which is from Turkey. So they used that. And thereafter, of course, they came with the uh, Chinese and Turkish uh, big UAVs, which is called as combat UAVs, they came. So just because I think we were well prepared, we had the kind of uh, ammunition, we had the kind of a uh, coordination, we had the kind of missiles, and we had the kind of a uh, counter US equipment, which is the soft kill. All this combined together helped us in a big way. But will this help us the next war? No. Why? Because drone and counter drone is a rusheting effect. If you have better technology for drone, counter drone technology will grow. Thereafter, you have to drone better and then counter drone. So both have to keep kind of a overcoming each other deficiency or strength. So therefore, this is a constant battle which is going on, and for this we cannot sit idle. And that is where we need to work together. As for the counter use equipment is concerned, at the area of 800 kilometers, we had 4,500 flying objects. 
including the Air Force. Now, if that be the kind of uh, 4,500 flying objects which you have, how can you manage that space? That is something which is important. So when you use the jammer, it's very difficult to tell which drone is getting jammed because it has the in record, it's a kind of a, a record of the frequency and other things. So that's on the lighter side, but that also can be a lesson drawn. But what is important is that we need new kind of a patterns to look into it. And artificial intelligence plays a very important role and networking again plays a very important role in this. Of course, hard kill, soft kill, uh, soft kill we are aware. Fusion of that information that which target to be engaged by whom. And of course, target tracking and tasking is something important. Moving ahead is the space integration. Navic, it will take some time, but I'm sure by 2026 December, we should be able to get it. But as far as the space is concerned, satellite, we used it in a big way. Images, satellite images. But our, actually, the requirement is much, much higher. The satellite's availability is much, much lower. Every side, even uh, if you look at the America also, they will also find it difficult when you go for an intense war. This time, the intense war was not there. Was it a conventional war? There are not many questions. It was a conflict with an enhanced volume. So if that be the case, then we need images not only from the satellites. What are the alternate means? That is something. And if not, then can we get the change detection very fast? Is it going to help us? Communication PNT and anti-satellite, which is there, that is something which you need to look, look into. So we are looking at low cost, low orbit, and also launch on demand. These are the two kind of satellites which we are looking at in the near future. As for the war sustenance is concerned, logistic management system. Now we have a logistic management system. The Navy has it, Air Force has it. Firstly, we need to combine that together and then also combine it with the national logistic system. Because after all, we will find that it is not only the uniform people who can uh, fit in the requirement because uh, when you have to feed in this 12 lakh population, whatever you do, if it's a long duration war, we have a limitation of how much we will keep with ourselves. So that's only one of the side. Deception and decoys, again, IIT Madras is doing a great job in that. Biotech and human enhancement. This is something exoskeleton. We are working out with some IITs and I'm looking that in a big way. And this is a big game changer. When you pick up something which is, let's say, about 20 kg, you feel like only 10 kg when you uh, pick up with the exoskeleton. So that's why we are looking at it in a big way. And uh, a lot of progress is being made, but uh, I think it's still not enough. And uh, also stress analysis sensor. This is something which is important because uh, we need to have the sensors now so that everybody wears this and uh, we get to know how much is the stress and depending on that we can uh, send the people ahead back or a kind of a stress buster. We also have a go no go tablet so you're aware in high altitude we've already prescribed for various places, Air Force already has it. We have also for accelerated acclimatization we are looking at it. We have used some medicine which uh, we are saying under the special conditions we can make this six day acclimatization to four days but I'm very hopeful with uh, uh, Dr. Kama Koti now having this kind of a situation that you are having the uh, lay-based institute, we'll be very happy to join this kind of a kind of a study on this. And uh, what is important is that we need this technical study because medical study requires seven years, and I may not have seven years to go. So when I'm saying seven years for this war two kind of a start. As far as AI is concerned, I think overall I have already talked about it because it uh, predicts the threat with the TSR, that is the time, space, and resources. And that is where the AI plays a very important role. So whatever points I have given, if you combine this together, we'll get the TSR. We know that enemy has the capability, but when he's going to use it, where is he going to use it, and what resources he's going to apply. And that's what something we need to look into. And of course, the distance support tools, as you're aware, that uh, now we have re rejuvenated our battlefield surveillance support system, and also CIDSS, uh, which we are working with uh, uh, Bell, and of course, uh, SAMA, which we are working out. So if I have to say so that uh, for the Vixit Bharat 2047, your and our convergence is very, very high because uh, as far as uh, the strength for the future lies with the industry, academia, and uh, military triangulation. And of course, uh, we also have to make sure that the bureaucracy, financial people, and the government research agencies also have to be taken on board.